How do you know when the apples are ripe? The apples are ripe. Right yes, Paul. The apples are ripe oh, when, when usually when they fall off. Okay. Like these are bright red ones behind you here. Look all pretty. These these ones right here. I want people to come and smell them. The aroma will blow you away. Oh. This is a kani from Japan, and it's the most aromatic apple. You put one of these in your house, your whole house fills the aroma. It's just awesome. You're gonna find, and I want you to sample. You know, you're gonna find that every apple you eat here has a unique flavor, different yes. from anything else, and nothing you've ever had of before, ever. But I have a question. So you said that it loses a lot of its mineral content pretty much 10 minutes yeah. after. So if you're picking them off the ground, the you're losing that apples, time period. I'm talking vegetables. Okay. Apples have a good, good shelf life. Okay. But we're talking vegetables. Okay. And, the East, East, and again, I, my, my, my honey crisps store for the whole year. They, they actually store for 12 months. And that one fell. So someone pick it up and eat it and, and, and talk to us. <laughs> Be descriptive. Okay, so this is this is just potato on the ground. It's good. Crisp, a little tart but was sweet. What's the water content like? Oh, that's juicy. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. Ah, yeah. And I want you to I want you to hear me. These trees have not been watered for 35 years, ever, ever. Let me, let me show you why. Everybody, if you can come out here to the front, because my demonstration is right here. I want you all to see it. This tree is, this is the second year. What? That one over there, that, 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 that um, liberty tree right there, the first year I planted it, I took 30 apples off of it because the branches were gonna break. 30 apples I took off of it the first year. Now people always ask me how you get your trees to look like that. It's the is way of the fruit. You see how this is already bending over? I know, it's awesome. Because they're so heavy. Yeah. And, and you know these trees look kind of funny, but I never use a ladder. You can reach everything. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. Well, look at this, look at this mutsu right here. Is this is this looking like a Japanese bonsai to you? Check this thing out. Yes. And look at the size. This thing has over 120 pounds of fruit every year. Look at the size of those things. I can't get the branches off the ground. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's just, you know, and look, it's a big, thick tree. It's, you know, 20 years old. Paul, hmm. Paul what are the spots on the trunk of this one here? That, those are, those are, the, some poor woodpecker thought he'd get something for dinner. And he worked really hard. Look at all those holes. <laughs> wow. He got nothing. You know what's interesting? I had a, 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 a farmer came here two weeks ago. It was, it was incredible. This old man, he's like in his 70s from Italy. And this guy, you could look at him and tell, man, this guy's been farming his whole life. This is, this is a veteran farmer. He's in my face the whole tour, questioning everything I'm saying because he knows better. He knows better. This won't work. What I'm doing won't work. He worked hard. And this blew his mind. This is where he totally shifted. Let me show you something interesting. These trees all here are dwarf trees. Mm -hmm. Dwarf trees. You know how they create dwarf trees? Anybody know? They take a cultivar, like, like say, for instance, like a Connie apple you want, and they graft into a rootstock that doesn't develop roots. And because you have a small root system, the tree stays dwarf, stays small. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. No roots, it's not gonna get big. Mm -hmm. You see this plum tree right there? That's a plum. <laughs> That's an eight-year-old dwarf plum. You see this root oh, sucker right here? Oh, you see the foliage of this? You see the foliage of that? This is 30-foot radius, not diameter, radius from that trunk. Hmm. In eight years, a dwarf tree is producing 30 feet of root development. It is wow. It's like, whoa. Yeah. You know, and this guy, you see this farmer, he's flipping out because he, he was so blown away, he couldn't believe me. So he broke a piece off and walked 30 foot over it and lined it up and sat there and just shook his head. He says, I, I can't believe it. In my experience, and they tell you in school, the roots go no further than the drip line. As far as the branches go out, that's as far as the roots go out. Drip line. Eight years, 30 feet of growth. And see, this is why I don't ever have to water my trees connect the dots. When you have a root system this magnanimous and this big, you can see right next to that guy standing, see those, those are the same ones. See right there? That's the same root system over there. 
it permeates this whole space. And because it has such a huge root system, it doesn't need a lot of water. Sure, too. Yeah. So are you just going to let these grow? No, I'm going to pull them up, but I have them here just as a demonstration for people to see. I'll pull mm. them all up. Because this this is a rootstock. It's not that tree. So even, even oh, if you okay. want it, it's not the same tree because okay. it's a rootstock. Yeah. But I want you to see the significance of the of a skin on the earth, how it develops. You know what I think about God? I think he's kind of loves to laugh. <laughs> oh, you're going to make it dwarf? Good luck. <laughs> you're not going to stop me. I'm not going to be stopped. I'm going to be awesome because that's just who I am. You can't dwarf me. It's just, it's so cool. <laughs> a guy came here uh, last summer, a, a scientist, you know, a scientist. And he's seeing all this and he has a really hard time wrapping his brain because he knows better. Are you following me? He knows better. What I'm saying can't work. And this guy, he lives in Chelan and he has a huge community garden and he grows those big those big pumpkins, those 125 pumpkins. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. And so I just told him, I says, listen, I see you're having problems. Just be an honest scientist. Scientists, when they find something new, they do a test and they call, this is a standard and this is a test, and they compare. Hmm. So own your place, do what you've always done, take a small section and put wood chips around your, your um, pumpkin plants and just watch what happens. So the guy calls me in August, says, I had to call you today. He says, where we live in Chelan, it's really hot, and by 11 o'clock every day, all my, all my pumpkins are totally wilted. He says, I water all day long. The ground is totally saturated. Mm -hmm. But at 11 o'clock, because of the heat, they're wilted. He says, what's blowing my mind? He used that, ter that term. The ones I plant in wood chips, I'm not watering, and they never wilt. And I says, well, get it. They have roots. You see, no matter how much water you're using, the plant can't take it up because there's no roots. When you have root system like this, you don't need a lot of water. It can take up because it has this magnanimous capacity to draw out. And it's so significant. It's so like, yeah. See why everything, look at those fir trees out there. It's been a, a hot, dry summer. Look how green they are. Mm -hmm. No one waters those. Mm -hmm. They're not being watered. And they have shallow roots. But there is a skin on the earth. Let me share with you the, the significance of the skin. Does anybody know about mycelium? The fungus is in the mm -hmm. soil under wood chips. Mm -hmm. Mycelium is a fungus that literally will grow attached for miles. It spreads out for, not, not feet, miles. And see, as plants connect to that, to that mycelium, they have access to that nutrition and that life spread out for miles. I'm telling you, man, the Creator is genius in His design. You know what's so scary about us? As soon as you till the soil, all that mycelium is killed and gone. You just wiped out that amazing, huge re resource and revenue with simple cultivation. Cultiv all it take to regrow once you put the chips on it. What amazes me is um, how quickly the Creator restores. And it's, just, and it's all about repentance and His nature is to restore. You just can't wait. He really wants to, but you got to come this way. And you see, as soon as you put wishes on the ground, as soon as, you, as soon as it rains you water, compost seeds release, and immediately you'll see a change in the foliage of your plants. They get greener. This happens immediately. Because it, and over time, it just gets better. It's like compounding interest. Better and better. And the beauty is, is that you're not doing anything. It's not about you. Where these farmers are, they're working, they're toiling, they're tilling, and they're putting all this expensive stuff back, and they're going backwards. Well, I don't do anything. <laughs> Can I get this? Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, man, it blows. Look, look at the color. Look, look, this is this is end of September. Look at the color of the foliage of these trees. This is impossible. They shouldn't look like this. They're not turning fall color. They're not acting like we're done. I'm, just, I'm telling you, man, I'm watching this and thinking like, wait a minute. Look at that amazing weed right here. You see this weed growing? I didn't plant that. Some bird dropped that. I don't know what it is. But that's grew in a space where it has had no water. And it's that dark green flowering looking like, you're caring for me. I'm just telling you, man, these things arrest my attention. I didn't plant that. A bird dropped that on totally dry wood chips. With no water, it looks like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. How often do you put down new wood chips? Mm -hmm. This, that space up there, it's been 14 years since I, since I put wood chips. 14 years ago. And again, let me tell you about the lies they tell you in school. Everybody who knows who's been in school will tell you, you don't put wood chips up against tree trunks. You don't do that. How stupid. <laughs> How utterly stupid. Could you imagine, I put, I put wood chips 16 inches deep 14 years ago, 16 inches. 16. 
16 inches. Can you imagine the intense labor it just get little spaces around my trunks without wood chips? And garbage and stuff would fall. What a nightmare. All of you have been in the woods in the winter, all of you, and you've noticed when the wind blows, needles and leaves bank up against tree trunks a foot, foot and a half deep. No one pulls that away. The trees are fine. And you're pulling them away from your trees, you can't do this? What happened to us? First of all, I don't know where they got the stupid lie and why they're doing it, except that they're just trying to mess up, mess up our lives. But it makes no sense. I'm telling you, the stupid things we perpetuate and say and, and do for no reason when they're totally brain dead. So, 